Well, in the words of the late, great Tom Petty, the waiting is the hardest part. This is the Corona Seto Post Show, and we've been waiting around for a while to see if things cleaned up. We gave it a good shot. We checked it, we checked it, and we checked it. And it didn't quite come to fruition, so we're going to go ahead and call it for the day. But the good news is, is now you get the Corona Post Show. We've been showing you inside pro surfing all day. We left you at a cliffhanger right there. <laughs> but you can check it out on worldsurfleague.com. Great show. Speaking of great shows, you're about to watch one right now. I'm Chris Cote. That's Felicity Palmatier. That right there is Mitchell Salazar. We did get the quarterfinals done today, which was pretty cool for the women. We still have the quarterfinals for the men. So with that, let's take a look back. It seems like ages ago <laughs> that we sent the women out into this line. It was actually firing this morning. We started off with an incredible matchup. Caitlin Simmers went up against Tatiana Weston Webb. Do you remember this, Felicity? Oh, honestly, it actually seems like a different day. It's, I mean, look at the conditions. When we rocked up this morning, it was absolutely pumping. I remember that first set I saw it was complete glass out there. I mean, Tati got underway. She did score a couple of nice rides, but she kind of wasn't any match for Katie Simmers out there. I mean, Tati on the backhand, she had this point of difference. And, you know, coming off uh, the performances that we've already seen from her, things were looking good, but yeah, no match for Katie. Yeah, she had a major rebound, not only from last year, also but from the event in Tahiti to first time making the semis since Bells. That's a pretty big deal if you're Caitlin Simmers, who not only got the victory over Tati in this heat, most importantly, Chris, she's the rankings leader right now, heading into Brazil, where she eventually won the event over there last year, but with an opportunity to win her third event so far this year, statistics looking like they're very much in her favor so far to take out the victory out here at Punta Roca. Yeah, Kitty Simmers leaves El Salvador in a yellow jersey. That is going to be a dangerous and lethal combination for the rest of the season. Quarterfinals Heat 1 ended like that. Katie smashing that end section, getting the victory, cruising up the rocks to accolades from all the fans on the beach. I believe she stuck around and signed some autographs, which is very nice of her. There's your quarterfinal heat one results. Katie Simmers moves to the semis. Tatiana Weston Webb is out, but she'll be going back to Brazil after this, so you know she'll be fired up for that one. So quarterfinal one did provide us with a pretty awesome show. It's always good to see you know, goofy versus regular out there and firing waves. But at the end of it, it was Katie Simmers that took the win there. What do you think her chances are of leaving here with that yellow jersey? Oh, I mean, it's lo it's looking lightly. I mean, she is going to leave here with this yellow jersey, right? I mean, it, it came down to that that uh, quarterfinal number three because that was when it all got, got put on the line. If Brisa lost, they were kind of at a heat for heat, right? If Brisa kept advancing, there was a chance that she could hold on to that yellow jersey. But Betty Lou coming out on top and, uh, yeah, Katie's obviously got this yellow jersey now. It's got to be feeling good for her because she hasn't worn it for a couple of events. Okay, and uh, can she keep it, Mitch? I don't have the math on my paperwork, so I'm leading on you. I think so. Uh, not only heading into the next event, heading into Fiji, too, and even in the finals. Uh, imagine what she's able to do as a number one seed heading over there. But you can't get ahead of yourself right now. You still have two heats to go, and you know, you've know you got a really tough competition ahead of you, too. But I think the difficult thing for her is the forecast right here. Does it play in your favor if it gets a little smaller, too? We'll see, Chris. I think it's an exciting day to come for Caitlin Simmers. Yeah, no doubt. Well, we'll be here bright and early to check it out and see what happens next. And don't worry about what Felicity just said. That wasn't a spoiler alert or anything. We're about <laughs> to talk quarterfinal number three here. This one was massive. Talking about that yellow jersey, it was being worn at the time by Brisa Hennessy, but she was going up against Betty Lou Sakura Johnson. So good. They named her three times. Betty Lou went out there and just did Betty Lou business. The waves really suiting her style out here today. This was another fun heat to watch, and of course, top five ramifications. Oh, for sure. Actually, didn't spoil it, Chris. You said it in the first heat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was just stating the obvious here, but it honestly wasn't up until this heat where, you know, Brisa still has this jersey on, but on the live rankings, because Brisa hadn't advanced out of this, which obviously she doesn't. It, Katie had taken that yellow jersey, right? But Brisa was looking good. She had a couple of really nice moments. But I just feel that, yeah, I, I mean, Betty Lou, to me, the Paizo board, the ghost that she's on at the moment, it's looking really good. And she just had a couple of bigger moments. I mean, this wave right here, this it was just really well served. She's just, for me, was just a little bit more precise in the pocket and sort of going up into the lip a bit more, whereas Brisa was sort of searching for that open face, which, you know, she likes to search for because I feel like that is her strength, you know, that's that big power gouge. But if you look at the waves, 
They were beneficial to Betty Lou. Yeah. Oliva, Sunset Beach, two of her best locations on the planet. I feel like she didn't get ahead of herself either, which was a huge thing going up against the rankings leader, Chris. And most importantly, too, the pressure was off of her. She's outside of the top five right now. Hasn't really done too well in the last few events. So she just wanted to get the ball rolling, at least the semifinal guaranteed here. Could have been a case of just pressure. Wearing that yellow jersey can feel like a lead weight. Well, here we go. Your semifinals are set for the women's bracket. Katie Simmers going up against Gabriella Bryan. That's going to be an awesome way to, to watch. And then semifinal two, Betty Lou Sakura Johnson going up against Caroline Marks, last year's champion from right here in El Salvador and our reigning world champ. So the semifinals for the women are looking awesome. Cannot wait to see when those heats go underway, hopefully it'll be looking like it did tomorrow, <laughs> this morning. You know what I'm talking about. The surf <laughs> forecast is on our side. Could be pumping tomorrow, and the semifinals are going to be awesome either way. Well, speaking of semifinals, the men are trying to fill their semifinal bracket. Let's take a look at what's about to happen in the quarterfinals. Did just watch a great Strider Wasilewski breakdown on the WSL Instagram page. He pretty much nailed it. You can go ahead and watch that right now and uh, come back to us. Just kidding. <laughs> Let's talk about quarterfinal one. Jao Chianka, Gabriel Medina. Jao Chianka coming back from injury. Jao is looking so fired up and sparky. No pressure for Jao. He's not going to make the final five. But getting that wild card here, he could play ultimate spoiler because we know Gabriel Medina is on a mission. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Jao's coming here, like you said, no pressure, wildcard moment. He's just taken down Griff in that last heat, which obviously Griff out here is incredible. The stats don't lie. Runner-up finish last year, first this year, so he's gaining momentum. But, I mean, Gabe has the opportunity at this event to kind of inch up into that final five conversation. You know, quarter two, again, Jack Robinson, Yago Dora. I mean, how many times have these guys met up? It's actually unbelievable. So you can see that Jack's probably going to get one back over Yago after Tahiti. We're calling this homie day because these are <laughs> all friends in all these quarterfinals. Quarterfinal number two, Jack Robinson, Yago Dora, Mitch. These guys have been traveling the world together the past few years. This one's going to be very interesting because, of course, another goofy versus regular matchup. Yago has been the talk of Punta Roca with his backside airs. Is he stoppable today, tomorrow, whenever he serves? <laughs> Uh, you know, I've been thinking about this the whole time we were on hold. Uh, Jack's looking for his third victory this year. And out of everybody in the top five, he's the only person to be able to reach two so far. I don't think three is impossible, but what that would do for the rankings, first of all, is huge. What it would do for his confidence. Uh, we always talk about world champions needing to win events to become world champions. And I think if Jack Robinson is able to achieve his first world championship in 2024, it's here. You know, he had the injury last year. Made it to the quarterfinals the first year we came here. I think if he defeats Iago, he eventually becomes champion right here at the spot. Well, we can't wait to see what happens next. Will the Iago show be on? You're going to have to tune in to find out. Before we get there, got to remind you, there will be a new champion on the men's side. Griffin Colapinto out. So for the women, there's still a shot that Caroline can uh, repeat what she did here last year. But for the men, we're going to see a new winner hosting that trophy. And what will the waves be like? Let me guess. Actually... I don't have to guess. We've got surf line behind us. Their arsenal of information is at our fingertips. Mitch, what are we looking at for tomorrow? Yeah, well, same thing as we saw this morning's light offshore wind, which is really good, but that thing in the PM once again, side offshore, which isn't the best direction right here, but if we start early enough, which seems like is the most likely thing, should be really fun. Luckily for us though, Chris, those PM winds don't really pick up until the late afternoon, which is really beneficial, and the size is gonna stick around too, Flick, looks really fun the next two days. Oh, I mean, I just go straight, I mean, Sunday morning, tomorrow morning, and Monday morning, plenty of opportunity and offshore winds. We've only got, what, 10 heats left? So, I mean, there's plenty still opportunity and probably a good call to call it off today because it looked like a dog's breakfast and, and out there. <laughs> <laughs> it did. You know what my dog eats. She's spoiled. <laughs> well, you saw the purple numbers there. We like purple. So we're all going to go to bed very early tonight because we're going to get up very early tomorrow to come back here and get eyeballs on it and see if it will, in fact, be finals day. But one more time, we got to celebrate a great day for anybody that likes or loves the ocean. We're talking about World Oceans Day, and this is a, a celebration of right there, that thing, <laughs> that giant thing that we love, the ocean. So take a look at what the WSL has been doing for this awesome day. Now you can go to the beach, Punta Roca, you're going to see that many trash because they save it. It can change so many lives. And see that, for me, is so beautiful to see. 
WSL One Ocean is a global initiative to inspire the surf community to protect and conserve our one ocean to preserve the future of our sport. Today, we are partnering with WSL Pure grantees Oriente Salvaje and Paso Pacifico on a plastic upcycling project that empowers local artisans. Today at WSL One Ocean, we have really learn how people take simple beach cleanup and making it into so much more. Obviously, plastics pollution in the world's oceans is something that we've been grappling with for a lot of years. So what we've been doing is collecting plastics as it flows out of local rivers before it gets to the ocean and recycle it into usable products like this bracelet. What I do is I work with communities of women who live in the risk areas and I design and develop product with what they have around, the natural resources or recycled products. What's really special for me is to see how these women believes in themselves. I do it through economical empowerment, but what's really important is that they believe in themselves. Because once you achieve that they believe in themselves, they are unstoppable. As surfers, the ocean is our stadium and our playground. Show us what you're doing by posting on social media with the hashtag WeAreOneOcean and tagging WCL and WCL1Ocean in your posts. Big changes are made of small individual actions with great conscience. One more time, that's WSL1Ocean.com. Well, hopefully while you were waiting for the call, you were as productive as Felicity <laughs> and Mitch were. They've been running around all day, working hard, so tomorrow could potentially be the best finals day possible. Thank you so much for watching the Corona Seto Post Show. Please set an alarm. Do whatever you have to do. Buy a rooster. Get up early tomorrow and come <laughs> down here because the Surf City El Salvador Pro presented by Corona could be on. Tune in, 6.15 a.m. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.